Okay, my name is Andres Pina. I'm a data engineer and I work at Radical Beat. I coordinate the, uh, our R&D activities mainly. Radical Beat is a product company which is based in Milano, in Italy. And we build up uh, basically two products. The first product is Radical Beat Natural Analytics, which is a self-service platform that is aimed to let users to implement their own analytics uh, framework. Uh, we do it with streaming technologies. And the second pro uh, product we, we built up is NSDB, which is a time series database. We we'll built it on top of uh, Scala and Akka. And uh, it, we, we got it really focused on guaranteeing a really quick view on streaming analytics for, for the view layer. And along this presentation, I think that you, you, will, uh, you will listen to a couple of concepts that you already know, but I hope that you, uh, you will find some interesting points. And I think that that's a good moment for start. So I will start from strings. Um, what I would like to say here is that uh, a data stream is an abstraction over data over a special type of data where there is a, a source, an external source, that we don't have command on top of this, which is uh, unknown because we, we don't know where these streams is going to conclude itself and is also unbounded. And a good thing about stream is that um, with a stream you can model out also batches, so you can take historical data and process it as events uh, from the beginning to the end. And as long as streaming has become important uh, through the industry, there were too many attempts to tackle how to manage streaming with, uh, when, when we are handling big data. The first attempt is the so-called Lambda architecture where you have to read different layer, you have the first layer, which is the batch layer, whereby you can run your high throughput batch jobs, and and you collect, you can schedule those jobs, you can run as you wish uh, in the moment that you prefer, and then you collect uh, the final outcome of your of your of your processing, and then you have the second layer, which is the speed layer, whereby you run streaming jobs. So you have outcomes that are continuously flowing out to the downstreams and to the output. And then you have so two different kind of results that you need to merge out in order to provide it uh, to the end user, of course. And that was the first point, that, that the first interesting point that Lambda Architect raised. And the second one was um, how we uh, if we have a bug, if we have a new business logic to deploy against those, uh, those layers, how do we reprocess data uh, in a feasible way? And one of the main problems about Lambda architectures uh, in some cases is that you have, uh, two since you have two different layers, you need to handle probably also with two different code bases. And uh, if you handle with two different code bases, uh, if you have a bug, if you have new business logic, uh, business logic, you probably need also uh, to work out against two different code bases. And probably those two code bases are running on different frameworks, and that means you probably need also two different kind of competencies within your team. And that also means that you probably need uh, two different hardware because both are uh, high demanding in terms of computations. And this kind of issue solved with the second attempt, which is so called uh, the CAP architecture that you heard about before uh, during the keynote. And the CAP architecture is a unique layer which is implemented using stream processors, whereby you have input sources that are all modeled as a streams. Uh, because we can, because we can model uh, batches with uh, data streams. And you can deploy your streaming jobs uh, with a unique layer, um, and so you, you are decoupling then uh, the problem that we got before. But, 
And this is the architecture we're trying to implement. Still, if you have to handle with a cap architecture, you need a system which is at the same time uh, able to guarantee high throughput and low latency requirements. And at the same time, you need th something that lets you um, reprocess your data quite easily is if you need to do it. And at the same time, you need a system that guarantees you that, that you can uh, uh, store your data and persist it and then you reuse it at some point. And that is something which is guaranteed by Kafka, of course. And Kafka is a streaming platform about, that at the same time guarantees um, a durable, storable system. You have, um, you can define the retention of your topics as you wish, and at the same time, is a publish and subscribing messaging system, and it's high, high performant. It guarantees you uh, the right performance requirements. And for data reprocessing, what you have is that you can easily uh, read your data as many times as you want. Um, using the offset, uh, the offset abstraction over the Kafka topic, so each record will be uh, coupled with a, with, a, with a offset, and you can decide if you want to read your topic since the beginning, since a defined offset, and so forth. And yeah, Kafka is made up of different uh, layers, and we are going to focus as well on Kafka Streams, on the Streams API, by this presentation, and right now, Kafka is, uh, yeah, it's a sort of standard for, uh, for streaming jobs, for streaming application, and what we do uh, with our product and Radical Beat is to uh, use Kafka as our backbone, we use it to collect data from external sources, and then we process it using the Streams API, and then we integrate the outcomes towards the external system, using the Connect APIs. But um, we want also, uh, with our product, to uh, guarantee to, to build a framework which is able to, um, to produce predictive descriptive and predictive analytics. And so we need to integrate machine learning somehow, but we, we needed to do it uh, within a cup architecture, which is our architecture, that otherwise the product was not complete, as Mr. Bean said. Okay, uh, briefly I will show you to separate uh, tracks. The first one is about model serving, so you have your train model ready to put it in production and how to serve it within a cup architecture. And the second track I will show you is one kind of approach to train models online. Okay. So model serving is part of a greater um, spectrum of theories which, which is called machine learning logistics whereby you can, um, they, they learn you how to how to um, cope with all the problems about end-to-end uh, -end machine learning pipelines. So since the, the training and then uh, as long as you have the ready model, you, can, uh, you have to maintain it. You have to um, make the governance of these models because they are real assets of companies. One of the main issues with model serving is that you have, uh, in a some point, you have a handover of these models between different teams, which are basically data science teams and data engineering teams. So that means that you have two teams that are working with different technologies, they are using different tools, and probably um, the model comes from uh, a framework, and then you need to put it in production with a different framework. So you need to cope with this uh, fragmentation that you have, which is increased by the, um, the large amount of tools that both data scientists and data engineers have um, to handle uh, machine learning, of course. And 
basically, we have had too many attempts to, to regulate this kind of uh, com communication protocol between teams. The first one, it, uh, it is the standard base, so you, um, you, um, they provide you a standard um, as long as the data scientist completes the deployment um, the modeling of your machine learning models, then it will export it in a standard that might be uh, that might be read uh, from other frameworks which are running on different systems. And there are several examples like predictive markup model language or WNX for for deep learning. And that's the first point, the, the first attempt. The second one, which is gaining momentum right now, is the container-based solution. So, regardless the underlying system the data scientist used to the, to model the um, to modelize the learning algorithm, it will wrap up the underlying environment within a Docker container, and the Docker container just have to know how um, to use those models to make predictions. And then it will instate out uh, a communication protocol that might be a REST, and, uh, a REST server that will uh, provide predictions. And uh, the main problem with the standard-based solution is that um, you need support. So you need support from the tools, and uh, which is not easy. And at the same time, um, you can cover a subset of uh, of models, or you cannot go really, um, you cannot really go deeper if you need advanced features. And this is something that the container based solution solves for you. And with the cons that you need uh, different competencies also about uh, automation, uh, so DevOps competencies. What you want to achieve basically is uh, using Kafka streams, serving uh, machine learning models against data streams, and we wanted to do it in a way that let us to choose which kind of tool that we want uh, to implement at the same time. And the main requirement, which is demanded also from the Kafka architecture, is that basically if we Mm, since we are running on our cap architecture, we, we, uh, the model usually evolves over time. So you have very different versions because the model is enhancing, because something is changing, a different tuning, and so forth. So the, the streaming job needs to follow this model's evolution as well. And we won't do it by uh, uploading new jobs, deploying new version of jobs, but we want to achieve it dynamically. And so we use the Kafka Streams, which is a library. I will go uh, through quickly along this uh, along this slide. And you have uh, two choices mainly. You have the Streams DSL, which is a high level DSL. Um, you have a second um, API, which is the processor API. That if you want to go deeper, you can uh, work with uh, advanced features of Kafka Streams. And um, I would like to use this, this example we implement and use the H2O, which is a, stream, which is a machine learning and to end platform. And uh, as long as the data science models um, complete the modeling of uh, the algorithm, it will, uh, it will persist the model as a standard Java object. And, and we started from here with the main objective to uh, serving H2O models within a Kafka Streams job. So the first con concept we introduced is uh, the so-called control stream, which is a stream that is bringing metadata across, uh, across your topic. And this metadata stream represents mainly um, how the model uh, is defined, where the model is located, and how should I bring the model to, uh, towards the uh, internal um, uh, Kafka stream task. And uh, the generator of this, this control stream is a model repository server, which is an external service that knows exactly the, the current situation, the big picture about machine learning model within your architecture. 
And so we take this uh, first stream, and then what we do is just to try to broadcast the stream to all your distributed Kafka stream tasks. And we use it, uh, we implement it using the global key table concept. So each distributed task will be self consistent because it will have uh, the same picture about your machine learning models that you need to serve. And the big advantage of this approach is as long as the data stream comes, so we have a second stream, which is the main stream, and the stream we need to predict. And we, we, want to do, we, want, we don't want to do shuffling right here, but we want to let the stream uh, going through the task um, we, with the upstream uh, repartitioning strategy. So we don't apply shuffling right here. And we can do it because each task is independent. Another thing we do is as long as we build the internal state of the task, we, we don't load the model at the same time, but we, we need only the metadata. We are going to load the model within the task when, uh, when the first event is coming and ask for that model. In this case, with H2O, we contact the model repository server and we download the POJO model and we build up it within the task. And you pay a little overhead uh, over at the beginning, but it guarantees you that each following uh, streaming event that will come and requires for that model uh, will find the model ready, and so it needs just, it needs just to, to keep the prediction and go into the downstreams. And another good thing about lazy load and modding is that if, you, if your job fails, uh, you lose the model, but you retain the metadata. So at each point, you will be able to um, restore also the model, again, with the same method. So this one is more or less uh, the architecture we got for the H2O application. But as long as I said, uh, we wanted to serve also other tools other standards or Docker containers if you want it. So what we did is basically we tried to generalize a couple of concepts within the architecture. First of all, I need, uh, since I have the control message, I need to um, tell to the application how should I build the broadcasted state, the internal state. The, first, the second generalization is how to build up the model within Within the, within the task. So if it is a module, we, we use the Java API uh, provided by H2O. If it is a Docker container, which is serving the machine learning model, so we build up a REST client within the task, which is able to call the external Docker container, which is serving the model. And the latest, gener the last generalization is, okay, I have the mainstream, I have the loaded machine learning model, okay, how, uh, how, I use, uh, how should I use the, the prediction and how should they be the outcome to the downstreams? And so that if you take the, the architect or use it with H2O and then with the same uh, strategy, you can also um, loading PMML models, which is the standard-based solution within your task, and we, we provided the, the implementation in Flink in this case, but at the same time, if you need to contact external Docker containers, you, you just need to, to load REST client within your task. Okay, the second approach I would like to talk to you about is about uh, online training. So how should we approach this problem if you would like to train model online? You have a different solution. Uh, the most common one, and we tried, we tried several, um, several ways to achieve this goal, the standard approach is that you contact external system, that external uh, ML frameworks that let you uh, implement uh, your machine learning model. But another strategy is, the, is, to, is to implement poor online training models. Usually, a train, 
you take the data set, which is a perfect data source, it is a, it's a batch, is an historical data source, and um, you take all the data sources and you provide to the model all at once, and then the model will learn uh, from the data, and then you will have the final model. What does it happen online? Online you can do it in that way, because you have a stream which is infinite and which is unknown, so um, you need to make out incremental updates of your model, of your loss functions. And probably you need also to do one event per time, and that brings out several issues uh, about incremental learning, like difficulty to converge out the model and so forth. And then we have a streaming system, so you have also to handle with the computational model. So you have the upstream, and what it happens usually is that part of your streams, uh, of your stream is discarded, and part of your stream maybe is stored within your task, and the rest of the stream is going uh, towards the downstreams. And what you cannot do, I mean, it's not really a pattern, is to load your uh, batch as a stream and collect it, everything within the main, main memory um, to make the, the batch update of your machine learning model. And the second problem that we need to tackle is about the nature of, your, uh, of the data, because, uh, because, you, because a stream, which, which is continually generated, is also usually changing in behavior. And this is the concept uh, described by the concept drift, um, whereby uh, you need to follow the evolution of this data and the changing be behavior of your data in, uh, in this way, just think about a newspaper we, which is uh, talking about domestic affairs and then something really dramatic or something really important uh, happens within, within your state and then the users will change it dramatically their behavior over the application and you need to cope with this changing behavior of your users. And about online training, online machine learning uh, algorithm is uh, the main advantage is that they are fast to adopt. So they will follow this changing behavior of, uh, of the data. And of course, um, it's, a, it's a good shape as long as you, you, you need to cope with, this, uh, with this, uh, the concept drift um, in your application. And what we did is using Kafka Streams is to implementing uh, a sort of uh, library. So within the same operator, you can choose the implementation you want uh, you want to use about uh, an online training algorithm. And uh, we did a couple of implementation. I will show you. I will tell you about the passive aggressive algorithm, which is a margin based solution. And that means if that the algorithm will learn. And as long as the, uh, the classification or the regression goes well, um, the algorithm will understand if the model is good enough to, to be passive, so to, to don't uh, update the model um, with the new enforcing. And it is based also on the feedback concept that I would like to describe you with this slide. So suppose that your task is, um, is the task demanding to train the, the machine learning model. Um, what, it, what it makes is the so-called frequential learning. So uh, as long as uh, it takes the first input, it will make the prediction. It will cast out a prediction. So it will say it's not a coup. And then what it happens if you have a second stream, which is a feedback stream that tells the true class and is something that passive aggressive algorithm needs. And it says, okay, it, it was a cube actually. So uh, the algorithm will enforce, so it will be aggressive against the loss function. And then with the second input, it will make the right prediction, so it would, it would say, okay, that, that is a cube. Okay, you were right with the feedback stream, we know it. 
and then uh, the prediction was good, but the, the margin of, this, of the loss function of the, of the good classification, it wasn't big enough. So it will enforce again as long as it will um, overcome the margin. In that, in that case, the algorithm will be passive. How we implemented it? Basically, we used the same topic to implement both the unlabeled data, which is the data that we, we are making prediction against, and the labeled data, so the, predict, uh, the event with the right class. And then we used uh, the store concept of Kafka, of Kafka Streams, which uh, allows uh, the developer to implement their internal task state in a persistent and full tolerant way. And we used two different store, one of, for the model, of course, and the second one for the event. And as long as the label of that, so the event with the right class will come, we will eventually update the model and we will discard the event. As long as you train your model online, you need also to change the way you are uh, measuring the quality metrics of your mm, model learning. And if, if you want, as we, say, uh, as we see in this, in this slide, to, to measure the accuracy metrics and so forth uh, um, in the same way you usually do with a batch data set, uh, you need first to run um, with the whole input data um, against the model, so you have no quality metrics at the beginning, and then since the second run, you can, tr you can start to measure the accuracy. Um, but uh, as long as you are uh, training online your algorithm, it is important also um, how much time the models need to go to convergence and to learn from the current stream, and as long as uh, a concept drift up happens, how much time the model is going to drift the, pre the predictions as well. And to conclude about the line training, of course, these feedback algorithms are good uh, if you have feedbacks as well. So it, it is not something which is usual. Um, but you can find some application as uh, spam filtering where, whereby users, gives in, uh, users give in, in, in this way uh, the, the true class of the, of the email and, and then the, the algorithm will learn, uh, will enhance its, uh, its quality by using those true classes. So to put in the blend, um, about model serving uh, stream, uh, even stream processing platform is the perfect fit because you, you can guarantee to uh, make prediction with, with your machine learning models uh, with low latency and high scalability. And the other problem is uh, trying, attempting to serve, at least in our case, um, as many frameworks as we can because different client, of course, has have different uh, solutions for deploying machine learning models. For online learning, um, it's still difficult to, to find productionized uh, use cases and uh, companies still prefer uh, do batch learning, uh, doing batch learning because it works basically. And, but if we think that in some cases where, um, and nowadays, as long as we are going through a reactive application, um, a reactive solution, we, we are trying, we start to think about uh, implementing a reactive solution also for machine learning and training. And, you know, it, yeah, 30 minutes, I conclude. If you want to come then uh, uh, to the office hour, I will be just right there. And I conclude, if you have any questions, thank you very much for your listening.